getting closer, but it will never last down. Here by the ocean, fire is burning, flares in the wind. Over the mountains, I see the moon, and so it begins. Looking to the rising sun. Big hello everybody and welcome to the next episode. Today, Yana and I are celebrating our first year on YouTube and we weren't 100% sure how to celebrate that big milestone. So we decided we'll invite you all into our home and show you around and show you the history in our house. The history in the items that we've bought and collected and found during some of our treasure hunts. So please, you're all welcome and I'll show you around. Here we go. Now down here, there's, I've got a great example of a beautiful piece of flint which Yana and I found on one of our treasure hunting. You can actually see it's been, it's a piece that's actually been used. So, so, so it's a huge piece of core and you can see where some of the flaking has happened where they've been removing pieces from this actual nodule of flint. It also makes a great bookend. So I've got that just down there. And just here we've got this very big hammer stone. I've actually got that on display just just on this book about the Knights of England, volumes one and two. And there's a great teddy bear here, which was made for me because a couple of years ago I published my very first novel, Stormforge, Lightning Strikes and Sea Dragon Wings, book one, The Jar of Moor. And a really close friend stitch this for me to celebrate the release of my very first book my very first novel so that's pretty cool thank you to david for doing that for me now this piece here is a commissioned oil painting painted for me in 2014 which was the 100th anniversary of the beginning of world war one it's been painted by an artist called Dilba. And just here, we've got the Battle of Ypres. And this lonely soldier is a representation of my great grand uncle, John George Woods, who was in the Durham Light Infantry. He died aged 21 at the First Battle of Ypres, gassed by the Germans. The painting isn't just a reminder and a celebration of his life, but I actually have every intention of using it as a book cover for a book I've been writing for the last five years, an actual life story of John George Woods. I've been writing it for the last five years and I've not finished it yet. I will do soon, hopefully. This is a drawing made by Edith Head, who was a costume designer for Hollywood 
and his drawing was for a dress worn by Grace Kelly in the movie To Catch a Thief. It's quite a stunning piece. And Grace Kelly's certainly very beautiful. And just down here beneath that painting, that picture, I have this wonderful antique map. A map dating back to 1904. And it's a representation of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, or the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which collapsed in 1918. And just here, this tiny parcel of land in the corner, this is Galicia. So Galicia is in Eastern Europe, just, just underneath it. You've got, just coming off from this direction, you've got Ukraine. And above Galicia, you have Poland. And just about, just in this region, just here, just beneath Tarnoff there, got a little place called Komarno, which is where my paternal heritage housed from. So my paternal DNA is Slavic. My grandfather was Polish-Ukrainian, he came from Galicia. And while we're talking about Galicia, I have this beautiful antique blanket, which was brought from Galicia. I think it was a wedding gift for my great-grandparents, Mikhail and Katarzyna Kuta. And this is one of the only items that was brought back from Galicia when my family fled. And it's passed down the generations. And now, Grace is my home. And I have this wonderful little paint, wonderful little black and white photograph over here of my grandfather. It's my grandfather, Jan Kuta, or in English, John. John Kuta. That photograph was taken in Kamano in the early 1930s during his first confirmation. And just on the other side, I have this wonderful black and white photograph of my English grandfather, William Bean, who was born in Swillington in Yorkshire. So a Yorkshire man, Eastern European. And some of you may recognise some of these bottles, especially if you go bottle hunting. These are Victorian stoneware bottles. These particular these particular ones I've bought and collected at antique fairs and and markets, and they represent certain places in my family history. Right, we have this one here, which is. A stoneware bottle from Colchester, which is where some of my family came from. We have this wonderful aerated water bottle here, which was from Anfield Plain, which is in Durham. And that's where my great grandmother was born. We have one for Molden which is where my father's maternal family came from. And last but not least, this wonderful one here for Chelmsford, which is where I was born. And I also have some very, very distant connections to Chelmsford in my long forgotten family history. So it's a bit like this connection of Chelmsford has come full circle this is probably one of my favourite items. It's This was salvaged from a church in Scotland in the 19th century. It's a Scottish coat of arms and it would have graced the church window. And it's beautiful colours, especially when you hold it up to the sun and I certainly do enjoy and love 
stained glass windows and this is stunning it's so beautiful and of course for me this particular coat of arms because I'm a big fan of heraldry but this particular arms being the coat of arms of the royal the Scottish royal family is my descent from King James V of Scotland so by right of blood I have it gracing my wall my hallway which is pretty cool here in my living room I have probably one of my favourite items it's this painting here of Elizabeth Woodville, wife of King Edward IV. Now Elizabeth Woodville, also known as the White Queen, is my 18th great-grandmother. And she certainly is stunning. She's a beautiful woman. And this is one of my favorite paintings. This and the execution of Lady Jane Grey. Now, the portrait of Nash of Lady Jane Grey is on display at the National Portrait Gallery, Trafalgar Square, London. And this particular painting here graces my living room wall. Here, is a marble bust of Saint Joan of Arc. This is an unsigned marble Victorian bust by the Italian artist Bessie. So it was carved in Italy during the 19th century and just next to it here we have a very a very old cup. This is dates back to the Bronze Age. So made between 1400 BC and 800 BC, and it was unearthed during the Victorian period from a burial mound. In the English countryside. This particular item is uncleaned and still has that mud residue, which I happen to like anyway, on the item. And it has these two strange holes, almost as if they were deliberately placed into that. Now this Bronze Age cup for many years was in a London collection and was then sold at auction, which is where I purchased the item. A bit further along, we have a very old bowl. This is Roman. This is Black Burnished Ware 2. This was made on the River Thames 1,800 years ago and then graced a Roman villa in Colchester, Essex, which is where it became forgotten about until excavation works in the 1950s uncovered many examples like this and it ended up in a private collection and later on in my own collection now these two fabulous little women up here are African, South African 
fetish idols. They date from the 19th century, made of clay. And I bought these on a recent trip to Cape Town. It's a wonderful antique store, just on the coast. And as soon as I saw these two items, I fell in love with them and had to purchase them. And next to it, this particular item is a Byzantine Greek fire, fire grenade. Made around the year 800 AD, it's extremely heavy. It was in a North London antiquity collection for many years. And so it sold at auction. It's 1200 years old and here on my bookshelf and just here we have this beautiful little medieval bowl this is Mediterranean or North African it would have been used probably for some small creams or herbs the small bowl dates from the 11th century to the 15th century. So this particular item dates is roughly no less than 600 years old and possibly as old as 900. So most likely it dates to the Crusades. Just down a bit further here, I have, before I move on to the items, I've got these amazing books here. These are by Anne Rice, and I'm a huge fan of Anne Rice, which is why her books grace my living room. I love the Vampire Chronicles. If you've not read them, definitely give her books a go, they're incredible. Just next to it, we have, I have two of these. These are bronze, the Victorian. That's another one here. These are pirate bookends, and of course, with my highwayman and pirate family history, I thought it was perfect to buy them at auction. We have a little Edwardian school bell here. Just here in the middle is something very old too. This particular rock is Kentish ragstone. Now it's not just any piece of stone or any piece of rock. For 1,800 years, this was a part of the Roman wall in London, namely the area opposite Tower of London. So this is Tower Hill, London Wall. Parts of the wall over the years have been crumbling away and this was behind, there was a barrier actually protecting the area where it was crumbling and there was fallen rock and just discarded on the floor and as soon as I saw this piece I couldn't resist it and grabbed it and well, I'll take that home with me. Otherwise, it'd be lost forever. It's not likely they're going to glue it back under the wall or anything. <laughs> Down here, we have some of mine and Yana's favourite finds. We found lots of items over the over the course of the last year. But these are some of the. We've got arrows just down here. Our mortar stone which we showed in one of our recent videos. Our felt or ads. This particular item is a Paleolithic hand axe. This very beautiful little 
adds made from blood red flint. Wonderful Neolithic sphere used most likely as a hammer stone. And the actual partic this particular stone you can actually see from the inside it's actually fossilized coral. This particular hammer stone here is probably a bit older and that would have been used for breaking the marrow from bone. This is actually an American arrowhead and I saw that on sale about six months back and I thought it's quite pretty and I've been watching a lot of you guys on I've been watching a lot of YouTube channels with American arrowhead hunting and I thought I might add one to my own collection this wonderful little Neolithic spearhead Lovely little hack. Then just here we've got these two jars. To, we've got this jar here, and down here a bit further is this bowl. This bowl is Iron Age, whilst this one up here is Bronze Age. The Bronze Age jar is much older, dates from 1200 BCE. And these two particular items were found in Jerusalem. And I bought these at auction. This particular bowl is from the time of King David. It's the only Iron Age item I actually own. And although this is much older, it's actually one of my favourite jars from antiquity and it's canonite and again like I said bronze age and again like I said found in Jerusalem we have a Lariston bronze sword so Lariston bronzes are from the Middle East north of Afghanistan some more of my arrowheads just there, some of the arrowheads that Jan and I have recently found. And I have this lovely little metal arrowhead here. And this is Viking in origin. And a bit further down here we have this huge bowl, it's very very fragile so I'm actually not going to pick this particular bowl up but this is Bronze Age and it once, it was found during the Victorian period, it's been restored it was found in a funeral mound and it con and it contained the burial remains of the person who owned this particular bowl. So somebody's cremated remains were in that bowl for thousands of years. Now lost, which is such a shame. And just over here, this middle, this tiny little vase in the middle is from the Indus Valley, Bronze Age, and it has, you can still see the mud on the actual item. It's been decorated too. And these other two on either side are Roman. So about 1,800 years and it's sitting on this beautiful piece of granite which I picked up at the top of Tabletop Mountain in Cape Town. I was going to use it as a bookend but 
I thought it makes a beautiful little stand. And these two bowls here at the end, this was found in Kiev, it's Neolithic. So that particular bowl is what's known as the Tripilia culture. Next to it, we have a European Neolithic bowl. It's got some damage on it. It's a tiny little bit smaller than that one. And this was found in a cave during the Victorian period in France, alongside some bones and some Neolithic weapons. It's come from an old antiquarian collection and would have been held in a French museum until it reached private hands and in private collections during the 20th century. It's got some old antiquarian writing on the bottom side just there. And it's now finally made its way here. Just down here at the bottom, we've got a lovely little collection of books. These are actually books that I've written myself. And I'll be showing you one in particular shortly. But until then, I think I have missed a couple of items up here at the top. Okay, this is a Roman vase bought at auction it's a museum piece these two pocket watches here at the back were made one was made by my three times great grandfather whilst the other one by my three times great grand uncle One's made by James Plaskett and the other is made by William Plaskett. William Plaskett being my forebear and James Plaskett being my uncle. And we have his ceramic poppy which graced the Tower of London during the centenary of World War One. Top here we have a European Bronze Age tinned bowl. Lots of damage to it, but still a lovely little item. It's uncleaned. Bought at auction. I think there might be another item, a bowl, which I've left out here. Now this, I forgot to mention earlier, but this is Persian. And it's medieval, so it's possibly around 800 years old and found by the Caspian Sea during archaeological digs. This ship, just here, is a model of HMS Warrior. Now my five times, or my four times great grand uncle, I should say, James North was quartermaster on board this ship. HMS Warrior was the world's first ironclad warship. You can still visit the ship today, it's in Portsmouth. It's a stunning ship. And of course this graces my home because of my family connection to that particular piece of maritime history.